Hi everyone, today I want to talk to you about PLI tools for DevOps engineers, platform cloud working in this area. So as DevOps engineers, we typically juggle a lot of command lines. The way I like to think about it is that we perform CRUD operations on the command output and various text files, YAML files, JSON, whatever. So there's, there's a need to make this work uh, easier. Um, the way I typically do it, and I recommend uh, other people do the same, is to get better with using command line tools. Because command line tools can really automate stuff. We can write scripts, we can use one-liners and so on. Um, you know, UI or GUI tools are not really the best here. So command line is a must. Uh, now, I have selected for this uh, video three tools. Uh, there are, of course, plenty more. But those are tools that, in my mind, are very valuable to know well and to know how to apply them. Um, those are so-called base tools, let's call them, like really, uh, you know, uh, something you should know very well, your screwdriver, hammer, and so on. So first tool I want to talk about is YQ. Uh, as a DevOps engineer, you will see more YAML than you ask for, and you will have to work with it. So uh, the little bit confusing part is that YQ comes in two flavors, the Go-based and Python-based. I recommend using the Go one. Uh, this is what we'll be using uh, for the demo today. Uh, you can see which one you have executing YQ version command, uh, and it will tell you um, what you got. All right, so let's jump to demo. And we are going to see what we can do with YQ and why it's useful. So let's imagine you have you know, a Kubernetes manifest you work with, so simple YAML deployment, and you want to do stuff with it using YQ. The first thing we can do is to extract values. So YQ follows the dot notation. So the first dot uh, stands for the root of the file. And then if the file doesn't start with an array, but just regular objects, we just start drilling down. So spec, template, and so on. And we are essentially drilling down to the containers array. And our containers array, uh, the cont arrays are zero, uh, zero index based uh, in YQ. So we have only one uh, element in our array and we want to grab an image of this element. Super easy, we got an image back. We can extract multiple values. In this case, I am taking the metadata and using a pipe operator. So I essentially take the output of whatever it's here, and it so happens to be those four lines. I take the metadata, pipe it further, and then I'm going to grab values of name and labels, and I'm outputting them to the screen. Uh, we've seen how to select things. Let's modify something. So. I can go drill down to replicas. So again, spec replicas, and I can change this value to five, simply putting here an equal operator. Once I do this, you can see that the value changed from three to five. Uh, we can now retrieve the number of replicas. I could just say yq.spec.replicas, but it would just be number. So a nice trick that we can do is to append like a label so we can label our values. This is quite useful when you want to maybe send an email or pull some data from, from your YAML and then just transform it in some way by adding those labels. It's quite neat. All right, let's add a new element. Same dot notation, metadata labels. And you can see that our metadata labels doesn't have a label named new label. Uh, so if IQ sees it, then it will actually create a new element in the label with a new value. So as you can see, we have under labels now a new label, new value. Let's remove an element. We do this using the del keyword, same notation. And we want to remove labels from spec template labels. So we want to get rid of this labels and up. When we hit enter, we can see that now we have an empty object of metadata. We can do something more complicated. This uh, snippet is selecting an element of array um, by its name. So we first, again, grab everything within an array of containers. Uh, this empty square braces denote the whole array. And then we pipe, pipe it into a select that essentially says, 
I want to select something where the value is true of name equal. So it evaluates whether this name is true and it will if we find an element with a name equal to my web app, it will it will grab essentially this part, this uh, element of an array. And once we find it, we pipe it further and we only extract the image out of it. So you can kind of see it's like progressively narrowing down our search. Once we got this, we say, okay, then take this image of the specific array from our containers array, and then just use pipe equal to change its value. So now you see we have the Nginx latest, but once I hit enter now, you will have an Nginx table. Finally, it's very easy to convert uh, JSON to YAML. So we have a simple JSON file here. And instead of using an online converter, I can simply do YQ tag P and um, it will output a valid YAML file out of JSON. All right, let's go back to the presentation. The next one is SED and GREP. I bundled them together, uh, but I believe SED, GREP and AUK are just so ubiquitous and you should know how to use them uh, quite well. One caveat here is that I substituted in the demo grep with RG, which is a slightly newer version or an alternative of, of a grep written in Rust. It just gives us a little bit more colors, but the principles apply the same. So here we have a similar situation on the right hand side, a text file and we'll execute commands in this window. So first, very easy, we can grep for a lines containing a specific word and that gives us a line number and highlights a word, which is a nice thing from RG. Uh, we can replace, uh, you can see we replace the word sample with the word example. And uh, what happened here is interesting. The output on the screen has the replaced values, but the file didn't change. We have still a sample word here. This is because said is not going to replace in place in the file by default it's going to manipulate only the output of the command. In order to replace it, we have to append the i flag. Uh, I like to think of it as in place, so flag i, and then we are now going to actually change everything in the file. As you can see, we've replaced all those things. Um, now we can, uh, for example, on the number of lines so this is rg minus c so here we count the number of lines with the word example we can also delete the number of lines so delete each line containing the word example so for this we use said and we just simply append d by the way if what you search for contains forward slash you can change those to anything else like hash or pipe it just needs to be consistent across the command and here we have deleted all the lines. As you can see, they disappear from the file. Now we can add a prefix to each line. So here we are using regex. The carrot stands for beginning of the line and we are adding prefix and then colon space. So this will result in adding prefix to every line. Finally, we can combine both commands. RG is much faster than said. So we are actually um, outputting here the RG output imagine you have a very big file and then we can execute a set operation uh, on top of it all right let's move on to the next one so next one is curl really important command if you test or develop um, http services um, this is a workhorse uh, for manipulating URLs. So let's see. First of all, we can do things like check current Kubernetes version. So we can go to releases page on GitHub and we can simply YQ a tag name, which will give us a current Kubernetes version. Very, very, very easy and simple way to do this in script. You notice the tag S essentially gave us <coughs> excuse me, essentially gave us a silent command. We can download the file. That's probably what you're doing anyway. Uh, when you run like an install script, you download it with attack O and then pipe it through shell. In this case, we just download a file for testing internet speed. Thankfully, I have fast internet. And then you can see that the file is indeed in the folder. 
A very important thing that curl is used for is um, communicating with the services. So if we say tag X or execute, and then we put a HTTP verb, we can use post. This is like a test URL that you can use for testing. And we say, additionally, uh, we, we attach a header of content type application JSON. We say, we're gonna post this content type application JSON with the JSON body of um, those values uh, with the tag D flag. And this is how we can uh, talk to our, so this is super easy for like testing or quickly, you know, interacting with services. Um, we can again uh, do things like authorize or authenticate. So in our case, we want to um, authorize against um, a service and we are putting a bearer token. So the way it works, you put a header with the content of authorization, then colon space bearer and your token. And in this case, if we would have a valid token, like an API key, we'll be able to connect to the service, which this test service allows us to do. Um, Another interesting thing is we can upload a file. So here I'm actually using a tag F where I'm taking a file from the disk and uploading it to a file.io service. This is the same file which we've seen when we looked at the sed and grep example. And also you see here that I type it to jq, which is essentially the same command for JSON as we've seen earlier for, uh, for yq. So when we do this, I retrieved a uh, from the from the field link, I retrieve the URL where the file is under right now, and then you can see we can curl this file. If you execute curl without anything, it will essentially issue a get command and return um, response from the server. So since we've uploaded our file from the set example, we can see the content. We can do more advanced things. So if you do performance testing, you can do the special labels. In this case. I can essentially evaluate uh, time, how long it takes for the result to come back. This URL does not exist, but I'm not uh, evaluating any other output. I'm actually throwing away the output. I'm just only interested in the time. So zero, three, seven, three, 38 seconds for the response. Uh, we can output all the headers. So curl dash I will output the HTTP type. So here we're using HTTP two. Uh, with HTTP code 200, which is okay from the get um, HTTP verb. And then we have various headers we can evaluate. Whether we are testing our service or I know using the other one, it's a good way to check if everything is fine. Um, again, we can add custom headers. This dash dash header is equivalent of dash H, which we've seen earlier. And this would return to us um, you know, the whole, uh, whole file in this case. All right, uh, so that was it. Uh, we've seen how to use YQ, how to use grep and sed, and how to use curl. Hope it gave you some examples, but that's just the beginning, right? So you need to be able to learn. So there are three sources or three ways that I typically learn uh, those kind of like classic Linux commands. The first one, obviously, man curl. Um, that's where you should start, uh, read all this and understand the options and so on. Another one that is quite useful is a command line tool called TLDR, too long didn't read. And you can, for example, say YQ. And it, it will very, give you very practical like examples, like, oh, how do I read? How do I write? And, you know, all kinds of things which we've done. If you forgot the syntax, you can actually quickly check it. Very similar tool to TLDR is cheat. Uh, so we can, for example, do cheat for said. Uh, it's, it's very similar. It also gives you like essentially just um, commands if you forget the syntax. But what is interesting with cheat is that you can create your own cheat sheet. You have your, like I have my own file for various commands that I use often. And then you can of course integrate it with the, with your command line, with your terminal, and you can have it accessible with a, with a key binding or something easy like that. There are of course plenty of online tutorials, courses, but the most important thing that you can do is to regularly practice with real world scenarios. So um, what I would recommend is, for example, building in Bash a very simple uh, URL reader. If maybe you want to retrieve some um, URL from somewhere and automate, you know, somehow um, things around it, 
where you can just uh, execute curl commands from script and you know make sure that you understand what's happening uh, equally for yq and others um, find ways to um, automate something on your system and then practice those commands and very quickly they will become a second nature and then you will remember the parameters it's important to remember them and try to actually be better and better uh, so that when you have things like you know reading from file converting something transforming putting you know pushing it somewhere to a service it will be second nature to remember a few parameters um, and then and then use it uh, all right so um let's recap real quick um the main point of using those commands is you know, to simplify your life, to make your job easier, to make less errors and just, you know, be able to kind of trust the workflow that, that you're doing and to automate really command line tools are, are great at that. Um, if you have any commands that I didn't cover, uh, I would love to hear uh, what you are using, what you find that are, you know, critical commands for you, uh, or there's some workflows that, uh, that you have to do at work um or for yourself and, and you know I, I would love to hear what other commands uh, you you find useful as a devops engineer um i will leave a link to this video uh, in the uh, to this file actually not video i'm sorry to this file in the video description uh, so you can execute those commands on your own or just copy paste if you're interested and i will also leave a link to a blog where i wrote about more commands so actually I covered six different commands uh, so you can also read this blog if you're interested otherwise uh, thank you for your time and uh, see you in the next video